Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. That was such a lovely thing for you to say. And uh, I deeply appreciate it. I, I am so honored. I, you, cannot, you have no idea what a feeling it is for me to be here today on Walt's 100th birthday to wish him a happy birthday. I, I know that, that uh, you all love and enjoy and, and feel these wonderful experiences when you come to Disney and you see his films and everything. But to have been part of the team, to have been part of the, the, the gang that put together some of these enchanting experiences, that was, it, there's no words to describe it. I, I think uh, at one point in writing Mary Poppins, my brother Bob and I, we're talking about what it felt like to be working with, well, Walt, of course, and uh, fellows like Bill Walsh and Don DeGrotti and, and Peter Ellenshaw. These are all incredible geniuses in their own, in their own realm. And uh, it inspired us when we were thinking about Mr. Banks at the bank when he loses his job and he's feeling sorry for himself. And he said these words. He said, a man has dreams of walking with giants to carve his niche in the edifice of time. Well, we felt that way, and we were walking with giants, and the greatest giant of all was Walt Disney. He was the greatest one. Now, uh, an example of how Walt would inspire you, talk about Mary Poppins, because that was a very special, special film for all of us. But uh, we were playing a song for Walt one day, a new song we had just finished, called Jolly Holiday, and, and as we were singing it, we had a sick sequence where the uh, four waiters would come out and sing these lines. They'd sing, uh, Mary Poppins would say, now then what would be nice, we'll start with raspberry ice, and then some cakes and tea, and then the waiters would come out. Order what you will, there'll be no bill, it's complimentary. Now, Walt said, stop, stop. And right in the middle, I said, oh, he, he, something wrong, Walt? He says, no, no, no. Uh, I don't think we want waiters. We're going to have penguins be the waiters. <laughs> and, and everybody sort of had, you know, this startled look on their faces. And I said, Walt, uh, how do you teach a penguin to sing? You know? And he says, oh, no, no, we'll, we'll animate the, the penguins. We'll animate the whole sequence except for the prime, prime characters, the principal characters. They'll be live action, and everybody else will be, will be animated. That's the genius. That was the spontaneous moment. He just said, that's it. That's the way we'll do it. And, of course, that unforgettable Jolly Holiday sequence in Mary Poppins was, was actually the inspiration of Walt Disney. Because it could have been very kind of ordinary, but it was extraordinary because of Walt. He, he made everything extraordinary. He made the people that worked for him do things they never dreamed they could do because they wanted to please him. And, of course, the greatest thing in the world was when, if it did please him, he would never say, oh, wonderful, marvelous, special. He would just say, that'll work. <laughs> And I tell you, those couple of words, those couple of words meant so much to all of us. Every time he would say something like that, we would all walk 10 feet off the ground. It was, it was very, very special. You know, Cynthia said that Walt was a great believer and he had optimism. He believed in the future. And uh, we wrote one song for uh, the Carousel of Progress, which every time I play it, I kind of think of Walt. And I think you might know what I'm talking about when I say, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day there's a great big beautiful tomorrow and tomorrow's just a dream away man has a dream and that's the start he follows his dream with mind and heart and when it becomes a reality it's a dream come true for you and me so there's a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day there's a great big beautiful tomorrow just a dream away <laughs> that was Walt Disney that's why that's why magical places like this magical kingdom constantly develop and move because tomorrow there's even going to be another wonderful thing. That was his dream, to keep it moving, keep it bright, never let it stagnate. You know, Walt uh, gave us a book one day, back in early 1960. He handed us the book and he said, read it and tell me what you think. My daughters like it a lot. They think it's fun. And tell me what you think. 
and he had a little twinkle in his eye, and we said, my brother Bob and I weren't working for the studio at the time, we just were freelance writers, but he kind of, we'd done a number of songs for him, so we felt he had gotten his confidence. And he handed us this book by a lady by the name of Pamela Travers called Mary Poppins. Mary? <laughs> yes, indeed. And we said thank you, and we took the book, and we started reading it. And wow, the stories, the characters, the fun, the imagination in that book was just special. We knew this was something knocking on the door. This was fate. If we could come up with something, not just saying, hey, it's good, yeah, we think it's nice, <laughs> but come up with some ideas. So we came back. We studied the book. We read it aloud to each other. I remember that twice. I read it once. He read it once out, out loud. So we both could hear it and read it. And uh, we then selected six chapters we felt were really appropriate to weave into a storyline, which didn't quite exist at the time. And uh, we came back with kind of a semblance of a storyline, not really a good one, but those six chapters and a series of songs. The first song being a song I'm going to play for you in a minute. But the, the, the bottom line to this whole thing was after we told him about our ideas and how th wonderful we thought this project could be, he smiled and took a book out of his bookcase, turned around and took the book out, and it was Mary Poppins, and he opened it up and pointed to the six chapters. He had underlined the very same six chapters that we had underlined. And at that moment, he said to us, you guys really like to work? And we said, oh, yeah, we sure do, Walt. He said, well, how'd you like to work for me? <laughs> and of course, he said, yes, yes. And uh, that was when we became members of the family, and he, we brought us, he brought us on staff. Now, the song I mentioned before was a song, that, uh, a story, rather, in, in the book about a lady who sold breadcrumbs at St. Paul's Cathedral. She was a little old lady, and she used to say, feed the birds, step into the bag, feed the birds, step into the bag. And we said, my goodness, that could be that could be the theme of this whole movie. It doesn't take very much to do a kind deed. That's, that's what the children needed. They needed the, the family. They needed the feeling that the father was interested in them, not just going off making money. And the mother was interested in them, not just going off and doing her cause. I mean, she, she, they were all sort of going in separate directions. And that's what Mary Poppins teaches them. And so we found this was a metaphor for what the whole picture could be. And the first inspiration that we had was to write this song. And when we had that first meeting with Walt, we played this song for him. And uh, it was the last thing we played. We played two or three other ideas. We had an idea for Uncle Albert flying in the air, and we had a, a Jolly Holiday idea and all that. But this, this one, he heard it, and he said, play that one again. So I played it again. He said, yep, yep. Yeah, that's what it's all about. We said, yeah, that's right, Walt. That's, that's the theme of the whole movie. And he understood. He just read our minds. We read his mind to a degree, I hope. But the, the basic thing was it was it became his favorite song. And actually, over the years, uh, he'd call us in on a Friday afternoon and ask us what we were working on. Then we would tell him, and then he'd say, uh, play it. <laughs> like, like, play it again, Sam, you know? Just play it. And so we play the song for him. And he'd always look out the north window of his, of his office and then he'd say, have a good weekend, boys, and send us home. <laughs> and that was, that was our relationship. And uh, after Walt left us, I uh, used to go there on Friday afternoons and play it for him. And this time I'm playing it for you again, Walt. <laughs> Steps of St. Paul's, the little old bird woman comes in her own special way to the people she calls. Come by my bags full of crumbs. from you Feed the birds Tuppence a bag Tuppence 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 a bag Feed the birds That's what she cries While overhead Birds fill the skies. Oh. 